Sup, 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 guys. Ryu here for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council with one hell of a deck, to say the least. Something that I'm going to have fun with for the next while is actually Harpies, which is something I have not done on the channel in a long, long time. And I know people are probably going to be screaming at me, You need to worry about doing the freaking, um... Worry about doing the uh, Dark Illusion stuff. You know, you haven't gotten to everything. Don't worry, I will, I promise you. But look at this here. You're like, why the fuck? Why the fuck are you? So you go heart and land Draco. Why? You are bad. That's why. I am terrible at this game. Therefore, I go for this amazing card because my opponent is a dimwit for not bringing out White Spirit Dragon because he could have went alternative otherwise, but whatever. So, let me explain before instant dislike. I have a face up spell card. My opponent cannot attack into heart and land Draco. I can instantly spit out 4,000 points of damage on my opponent's lay points, bring them down by half. And especially for a deck that really can just one turn change the tie of the you know entire tie of the game. That is amazing. Now my opponent's being a little dumb here by not utilizing his maiden, so I'm gonna utilize it myself and force feed him another two thousand. Only leading two thousand to go and he can't really do shit about it. He's got these face downs and if he was a competent player, no disrespect he could have went for Spirit Dragon, but there's no Spirit Dragon, which I'm kind of like banging my head on the table just as much as you guys are, because I know I want to show you more quality games. So I also want to show you what the decks can do and basically how far we could push it. So can I make a minor little misplay? Because I have a Dragon Face out, Chandler is level 7, so I cannot utilize her for the way I want to utilize her. And I'm like, God damn it. Why did I leave it on the board? So I'm going to Twin Twist the Hysteric Sign, which seems like a terrible play, but trust me, it's really not. I'm just basically setting it up here. He's playing, like, the, the weird freaking version with Ajarais and not even utilizing, you know, everything else. He's going for Blue Eyes here, but bottomless to the Ajarais, his Blue Eyes is safe, though, because Effect lingers. Thanks for taking that out, by the way, because now I can make Rank 4 Spam tasty as fuck. There's no really, there's really no other way of phrasing that. So I'm gonna pop my own uh, harpies, uh, harpies hunter grounds. I really have no use for it to be completely blunt. And I'm gonna go for phantasmal dragon and style point for victory. Then we get to this match, which I actually enjoyed a hell of a lot more. And I'll be honest, I don't think there's a cookie cutter build currently for dark magicians because there's so many different routes to really take for dark magician. It's kind of like playing um, Carrot Man Quasar. I was looking, I was researching that deck a few days ago because I was bored. But it's pretty much where you have all these different routes to take to get to the one result. But in Dark Magician's case, it's pretty much, since the deck is like tier 3 right now, being completely fair, it really is, because it's missing Internal Soul and TCG, there's all these different routes to take, and you just don't know where to go, and I think that's the beauty of it. And kind of makes me a little bit jealous as being a Blue Eyes player, that, you know, we pretty much know where to take the deck and where to go with it. I top uh, Skill Charge here, that's hilarious. But I'm going to go for Norden, because I already see a threat on the board, so I'm going to go for Dire Wolf. And a Chidori, Chidori, get rid of that. Dire Wolf, get rid of Circle. So that way there's no more back row. And it's just me and him. I have to just swing at him. And I'm going to get an end phase search. I'm building up my graveyard so I can just pretty much abuse the shit out of things once again. And for those wondering, I'm not running Zephyrus the Elite in this build. I'm considering it for a future variant or future like version. I just haven't really decided on it quite yet. But uh, he's going to basically just get taken out right there. And this is probably my favorite match out of all the replays I was able to get uh, before recording this. Because I'm kind of a little time restraint this time. And uh, I actually want to talk about what he's doing here in a sec. I'm a little out of time restraint because No Man's Sky is coming out. And re Gaming is going to be taking a lot more focus. So I needed to just basically get these decks done. So that's why the replays may not be the greatest. Just saying. But this... This is fantastic. So he uses Rise Bell to raise one of his monsters by three levels. That makes that, in well, he makes Red Rising Dragon. I didn't even know this was a thing. Maybe I talked about it and I completely forgot about it. I have a bad habit of that. He brings back the Red Resonator off Rising Dragon's effect. From here, he's now able to gain 2100, make the Archfiend that he needs, 
bring out the hot red abyss and red raising later in hand with two set on the board and i really do have to deal with those so i'm going to twin twist here he's going to nullify i'm cool with that going to play harpy queen he's going to notice harpy queen qq quietly crying in the corner harpy channeler effect into harpus into utopia into utopia lightning because i did not know what that was and i wanted to play completely safe so boost over it's dealt with vanny's face down chandler and ham this is pretty much quality Yu-Gi-Oh, where basically you're going back and forth and you're both top decking until you get to something but i have vantage on board this is the kind of Yu-Gi-Oh i like where basically you're trying to play out of a situation where you and your opponent are pretty much on even grounds i love it and I wish we can get more of that. So that's pretty much why I wanted to feature this. Because it was just really, really cool seeing him do that whole combo. As much as it is seeing my own deck go off. You know, it's something I want to showcase there. So Instant Fusion, Norden, you already know the combo. Bryn Harp is back. He's like, nope. We're bottom, uh, bottom, uh, bottomless. Bottomless, less, less. The, uh, the monster way. But I'm going to go for style points with Dire Wolf. And that's going to be game. Let's roll that deck profile. Alright, here's the deck profile on Harpies, because I showed you the duels. So, here's my whole thing, why there's a Summoner Monk sitting in the side deck. It's not really a side deck card, it just couldn't really fit it in the main deck without making the main deck 41 cards. And I really did not want to. I still feel 3 Dancer with the with Demise decks running around is pretty damn good to run, and it's also extra search for the three harpy harpists that's just my personal preference if you feel otherwise then feel free to throw on that second summoner monk so let's run down the main deck three harpy queen three harpy harpists three harpy chandler three harpy lady one that's a lot of herpes three harpy dancer just kidding and one summoner monk then for our spell lineup two instant fusion one soul charge one elegant egotist only one trust me you don't want to dead draw it Double Twin Twists, three Hysteric Sign, three Harpies Hunting Ground, and then for Traps, one Bottomless, two Quaking Mirror Force, two Icarus Attack, one Vanity's Emptiness, double Phoenix Chain, three Hysteric Party, and one Solemn Warning. Now I know what some of you are probably going to say, because I could see it in my head. Now, just drop an Icarus Attack and put a second Summoner Monk in, or drop out a Harpy Dancer. I like three Harpy Dancer because, like I just said, when it comes to Demise, anything... It's usually set 5 whatnot. I like the flexibility of being able to pop so much back row without even a second guess about it. Now, I know Twin Twister is a thing, but still. Quaking Mirror Force still proves to be one of the best tech cards, one of the best cards you can run in general right now because it puts everything face down, makes like Chaos Max decks, lulls. Now, I know some of you are probably going to go, what the hell are you running this for? So let me explain it in case you didn't watch the duel. Number 82... Basically, when there's a face dot spell card, I can attack directly. I can rip out half of my opponent's light points like that in two turns. And that's not to really scarf at because it's something that can be very threatening on the board when you can't fucking attack it and it sits there. Now, I know there's also probably going to be people like, why are you not running this card here with rank 7? If I can get it to pop up, I'm being terrible. Here we go, Harpy's Pet Dragon. The main reason behind no Harpy's Pet Dragon, as much as I love it, the deck's better focus on only being a rank 4 deck and just being rank 4 spam. Harpy's Pet Dragon, you know, adds a rank 7 element into the deck with Drago Sack and Big Eye and all the assortments and all the top pieces that you want. But there's really not a reason outside of just running it for, you know, fun purposes. I'm taking the deck a little more serious and trying to bring it into a little more competitiveness without dead drawing so much. So that's the main reason why you don't want to dead draw him. He's not bad, you just don't want to dead draw him, and the deck's better off being ranked 4. Now I know what some people are going to say, but you had number 82 on the board and you could have make, you could have made a rank 7 if you had that in your deck. But if I draw it, it's another dead draw and I don't want another dead draw. Limiting dead draws are crucial to deck building. Just saying. For the extra deck. Number Uto is S39, Utopia the Lightning, Dark Exceed, Rebel Dragon, Utopia, Ragna Zero. God, Ragna Zero is so disgustingly good. 101, because it's a rank 4 spam deck, why the hell not? It's actually still got some usability. Uh, Harpy's Pet, Phantasmal Dragon, this card is amazing, just like Karin Landraco. Attack directly, attack directly, attack directly, win! <laughs> 
Uh, then we have Ice Beast Zero Fane. It's amazing. Have what it does. Nullifies everything on board. Heart and Land Draco. So freaking ridiculously good. One Castell. One Direwolf. Double Chidori. I'm kind of on the fence about running three. I think two is the perfect number. I don't really see a need to run a third one right now. I know there's a lot of, we just talked about there being a lot of set stuff, but it's always in the back of my mind, like, maybe I should just max out on three, you know, kind of like the Cyframe Lord Omega thing where you build uh, Shirayui zombies that you want that maximum account for, you know, pushing your deck as far as you can. Third Lightning Chidori would be nice, but I pretty much left it out because I'm just like, Two is fine enough right now because I don't ever really see myself going into a third one. Abyss Dweller, Gaia, Cowboy, and Norden. Instant Fusion into Norden. The other Instant Fusion is pretty much a Summoner, you know, just Summoner Monk bait, Twin Twister bait, or Historic Party bait. I don't run three. It's if I ran three, I would probably run, if I could remember the exact name, I know it's something like Marvelous. It's. A wing beast that you could bring out. I'm not sure the level on it, but I know it's a fusion that you could actually bring out from your extra deck off of instant fusion. I've seen Miss Valley Master's videos, as boring as he is, JK, um, you know, talking about it. So that is something you can do, but I decided not to. I'm probably going to build this deck IRL, have it in my little collection of decks because it's super fun for me to play. You know, you just find those decks that really click for you. This is one of those. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you guys on the next one as always. Peace.